In this lecture, I just want to give a really brief introduction to crystallography before we start talking a little bit more about the, the nitty gritty uh, of it. So before I begin, uh, let's just define crystallography. Uh, crystallography is the science of determining how atoms are arranged in a material. Now, I'm, I'm going to use a, another term more frequently than crystallography because we're going to use crystallography to talk about how the atoms are arranged, but we're going to call how the atoms are arranged, we're going to call that the microstructure, okay? And I want to talk about, at least for this class, what length scales we're interested in, okay? So here's a, a, just a graphic showing various disciplines here that would study materials ranging from physics to chemistry to material science to engineering, uh, sort of as a function of length scale. Length scale here is nanometer, micron, millimeter, and meter. Uh, if you if we're if we're in the far sub nanometer regime, we're typically talking about electronic structures. So that's how are the electrons arranged around a single atom. When we get to about uh, uh, you know a few angstroms, so a few tenths of a nanometer, then we're talking about an individual atom, and and maybe as we talk about um, uh, slightly larger than that we're talking about how those atoms what kind of structures they might arrange themselves in as we build up um, so we're going to begin in our class talking about um, individual atoms beginning at let's say one angstrom so 10 to the minus 10 um, meters uh, up to grains of a material and, and you don't know what a grain is yet and and that's okay uh, a grain is just a grouping each grain has uh, all the same orientation of the crystal structure of the atom. So think of it as a single crystal um, in that grain, and then we bind, bind a bunch of grains together with different orientations, and now we have a polycrystalline material. Those grain sizes may be or on the order of, I'm just roughing this out, it could be, let's say, 100 microns, could be down to nanometers, and sometimes you can even have it up in the millimeter range, but but for just as a, as a ballpark number, we're going to talk about length scales that are going to range from about 10 to the minus 10 to 10 to the minus 4. So we're going to span about six orders of magnitude in terms of length scales. Okay? So if we are blocking off um, the regions that we're not going to look at, we're not going to look at the macroscopic, or I'll say, let's say, above the millimeter scale. We're not going to look at anything that's really electronic, minus just a little brief review of the chemistry to talk about um, uh various orbitals and valence electrons okay so that's what we're going to focus on in this class now as we talk about microstructure and how um, atoms are arranged in a material there are two broad categories that we typically uh, classify uh, materials into and the first one is non-crystalline so a non-crystalline material uh, is it has no periodic or I'm going to use periodic to mean repeated so there's no repeated or arrangement of atoms so basically the atoms are in some sort of random position I'm also going to frequently call this kind of material amorphous so non-crystalline and, and amorphous are synonymous okay and I'm giving you a picture of of a, of a amorphous material here, here below. This is non-crystalline silicon dioxide where the blue atoms are oxygen, the red atoms are silicon, and you can see that uh, they they don't have a repeated structure. They're, they're maybe not perfectly random, but they're certainly not ordered in any sense. Okay? Typically, this kind of uh, arrangement is going to occur when the atomic structure is very complex, so the atoms kind of uh, prevent maybe uh, forming a regular structure or be difficult to, or it happens with, with rapid cooling where sometimes the atoms might like to get into an arranged uh, repeating structure, but it's cooled so fast that we, we um, sort of freeze them into their, uh, uh, their, their random positions, okay? So those are the two cases where you're likely to see non-crystalline materials. Um, they're most common in polymers, so most polymers are uh, non-crystalline, and some ceramics. Uh, for I'm giving you an example of glass. Glass is a classic example of a amorphous or non-crystalline material. There isn't the order. Um, I will also just say in passing, although I'm not going to put it on the slide, it is possible to create non-crystalline metals, although it's very difficult. Um, because you have to cool the, the metal so fast from a liquid state. 
Okay, so that, that's the rough overview of non-crystalline materials. Okay, moving on, the, the um, uh, corresponding uh, category of materials is uh, to, to non-crystalline. The, the other category is crystalline materials. And in this class of solids, we have some repeated or periodic arrangement of atoms. So again, I'm showing you silicon dioxide, except this is crystalline silicon dioxide. And you can see we have these repeated hexagons everywhere, and those could go on for in, uh, forever, basically. Uh, most often, these are uh, the thermodynamically stable state of most materials. They're a lower energy state, and we'll see why in, in uh, the next slide. Uh, most common, uh, you're going to see these uh, in metals. So if you have a piece of steel, for example, uh, it is it is crystalline. If you have a piece of copper, it is crystalline. Gold, silver, platinum, aluminum, all of those are crystalline materials. They have a very um, defined order of their uh, of their atoms, uh, and they repeat. And we're going to talk uh, extensively about what that order looks like. Um, it, it, crystalline materials are common in many ceramics, um, not all, but many. And then there are some polymers that are considered crystalline, although I would call them semi-crystalline. They form a repeated structure, but it's not quite the same repeated structure as what we're going to see with uh, other classes of materials. Okay? So let me kind of break down crystalline versus non-crystalline energies for you. So if you imagine random packing, uh, random packing is not going to give you the most dense state. If you if you dump a bunch of ping pong balls in, in the bottom of a box, uh, it, the the moment that you dump them and they're all random, they're not in their lowest energy state. If you shake the box a little bit, maybe they be, they get into your lowest energy state. But in this case, as I'm showing you with these blue atoms, they're they're um, uh, they're not fully dense. They're not uh, necessarily at the optimal distance. And so if you look at the energy curve, what you're going to see is that your bond energy is typically larger than the equilibrium bond energy, which means that your overall energy of the structure is going to be higher. In contrast, if you have dense uh, and ordered packing, like is common in a crystalline material, so this is obviously a very ordered uh, hexagonal packing. Um, uh, this is actually uh, uh, the kind of packing that each layer of atoms in aluminum and copper um, uh, uh, silver, gold. This is this is the what that layer looks like. It's actually a hexagonal packing, just like I'm showing you here. In that, in this case, the um, the packing is optimal, and so that the the bond energy is at its minimum, right? So that in general, uh, dense ordered structures have lower energies, which means that typically our equilibrium microstructures or or structures here, um, typically they are dense and crystalline. Okay, so um, it's that's because crystalline materials make up such a um, a high percentage of the materials that we deal with as engineers. We're going to talk extensively about them. Um, one final thought that I want to leave with you as we talk about uh, crystalline materials is is the, is a fundamental uh, way that we characterize them. So typically, crystalline uh, uh, materials are going to be characterized by what's called a periodic unit cell. And all that is, is it's the, it's the fundamental repeating unit of the structure. So you could create the structure just by stacking this unit over and over again. So here's an example of that. So this structure, you don't know, we haven't talked about it yet, but it's called a face-centered cubic structure. And if you look at, if this is the atomic arrangement with these light green atoms, the periodic unit cell is represented by this a square uh, that touches these uh, darker green atoms. Okay, so that square is the periodic unit cell. If we were to take that out and and chop where the square is, what we would see is something that looks like this. And the reason it's called face-centered cubic, and again, we'll talk extensively about this in the next lecture, is because the the at, there are atoms that reside at the corners of the cube, so that's that's your cubic structure, but then there's a half of an atom on each face of the cube. And sometimes we shrink the atoms down so that they are easy to see all of them. And we, we represent them like, like in uh, uh, figure B here. Okay, so the fundamental, so that what you should take away from this is that the periodic unit cell is the fundamental uh, uh, tool that we're going to use to characterize crystalline materials. Um, uh, and, and we'll go from there.